Uh, hello and thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. We are students from Cranfield University 2013-2014 session. Uh, this is a video from our group project. We undertook our group project here in our MSc for Network Rail here in the UK. Uh, the objective of this project was to find uh, the major driving factors that have been causing flooding within some uh, areas in, in England. Uh, this particular area is one of the study areas uh, we've been looking at, which is uh, around the Somerset levels uh, in the southwest region of England. Uh, before I start, uh, I would like to quickly introduce to us what we are seeing on the screen. The green area over there uh, is the 5 meter resolution DTM that's been provided to us by Network Rail for this project, and onto it a topographic base map has been projected for more context. The red lines we see here are the rail tracks while the red dot symbolizes the rail stations and the yellow dot uh, symbolizes uh, flood events that have been recorded in the past by Network Rail. Uh, so the purpose of this video is to show you how powerful this uh, 3D visualization tool we're using to make this video is, uh, which is the GeoVisionary tool, and quickly run us through some series of incidents that had occurred on the 7th of July striking on uh, Network Rail infrastructure. Uh, 7th of July 2012 to be precise and also to use this uh, video presentation to quickly show some results and findings from our project. So we've been able to build a classification regression tree model uh, which has helped us to make some predictions of areas that are likely to flood based on the data sets that we've been using to work in this uh, project. Uh, so uh, we'll, first of all we we'll move on to the first series of incidents that had occurred uh, in Tonton Station on the 7th of July 2012. Uh, we've been able to acquire a 2013 satellite imagery and a 2014 satellite imagery showing us uh, the same area before and after the flooding. Uh, so we can see the 2013 satellite imagery showing us this area uh, before it got flooded and we could see some series of incidents that have been recorded uh, in the past from 2012 and now we can see the 2014 satellite imagery showing us the same location uh, with the actual uh, recent flood incident that had occurred in 2014 so we could see the extent at which this flooding uh, has actually made an impact on the network grid infrastructure another quite interesting thing I would like us to see here uh, are the results from our model uh, the results are some sort of predictions uh, of uh, areas being likely to flood based on the data sets uh, we've been using to work in this project. So the red thick lines we see here are predictions from our model of areas that are likely to flood. Uh, so we can see how this prediction matches on quite nicely with the actual incidents that have been recorded in the past and uh, how it matches on quite well uh, in the flood uh, flood extent that had occurred in 2014 and this uh, uh, leaves us to think that our model is quite, uh, the predictions from our model is quite promising and we are, we, we are very much confident in the results. Uh, to answer the question of this uh, research, uh, the hydrology of salt type dataset have been flagged off here by our model as the major driving factor that had been causing flooding within this uh, area. Uh, the hydrology of soil type data set has been provided to us by Cranfield University for the purpose of this research. Uh, this is a data set that tries to explain how the soil behaves when water drops on it. So it tells us the standard percentage runoff and if a soil is permeable or impermeable and how it absorbs water quite quickly or how uh, water is unable to uh, be absorbed into the soil. Uh, so the areas with the sky blue to the dark blue colors are areas of impermeable and fluctuating groundwater, which means these areas uh, uh, does, don't, ab don't absorb water quite quickly and they have a high standard percentage runoff of about 55 to 60 percent, which means the area within the sky blue to the dark blue fall within areas of uh, vulnerability of being flooded uh, if there is a heavy downpour, which there was in this particular day we are looking at. So we are now moving on to the uh, last incident of the day, which was at Helen Branich. At Helen Branich, again, uh, an incident was recorded. Uh, and again, our model has been able to help us uh, understand uh, the major driving factor within this incident location. Uh, the black boundary we see here is a, 
is an estimated catchment. Uh, in this uh, incident location, the major driving factor has been flagged up as the size of catchment area. We have a size of catchment area of about 27,000 hectares within this area and uh, it's been the largest uh, catchment area in, in, in the whole of our study area. Uh, and in this area, to answer the question again, size of catchment has been identified as the major driving factor that has been causing flooding within this uh, location. Uh, so I hope with this uh, quick uh, video presentation, I've been able to identify some of the data sets that have been uh, uh, given to us for this project and some of the data sets that are the major driving factors. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and I hope you liked it.